Hi, my name is Nikki Piper, and I'm going to be presenting on coronary artery disease, and my group members were Kelsey Heidema and Ella Skippers. <clears throat> so coronary artery disease is damage or disease to the heart's major blood vessels. Um, it's kind of a wide-ranging disease, and it can lead to a number of other diseases, such as angina, which is chest pain, congestive heart failure, myocardial infarction, or also known as a heart attack, and then sudden cardiac death as well. So some symptoms that you may be experiencing um, are chest pain, nausea, lightheadedness, sweating, tachycardia, and shortness of breath. Um, and I just wanted to go over some risk factors with you, whether these are things that you've done in the past or things that uh, we want you to avoid as your healthcare team. Those things would be elevated cholesterol levels, tachycardia or elevated blood pressure, smoking, heredity, obesity, lack of physical activity, stress, and diabetes. So when your doctor is um, going over your assessments, he will do three major categories. So he's gonna start with the history. He wants to get a careful description of pain, including location, severity, and any possible causes that you might know about or anything that we can um, figure out for you. Next, we'll move to a physical examination. So here he's gonna check for any possible signs and symptoms of a myocardial infarction or heart failure, because these can come from CAD. So any of these might be labor breathing, pallor, sweating, or anything like that. And then it will also be important for your doctor to auscultate your lung sounds to listen for any sounds of um, valve dysfunction. Finally, your doctor will move to a psychosocial assessment. Um, he is going to work with you in order to reduce any stress because increased stress on the veins is a um, long known factor of CAD. So it's important to reduce both occupational and physical stress on your body. Um, so there are a couple causes that we wanted to go over with you. First would be any atherosclerosis and plaque buildup. This is a cause of CAD because it diminishes the ability for your blood to flow through your vessels, which places extra stress on them. Um, which kind of moves into the second one, damage to arterial endothelium. So when plaque starts accumulating in the vessels, it damages the inner lining or the endothelium of your arteries, which can lead to thickening of the vessels, calcification, um, and just reduce blood supply overall. And then the last cause is aging. Um, aging in the body just results in fibrous changes in the vessels as a whole. And this can lead back up to the first one, which causes an increased risk of atherosclerosis. So when it comes to your treatment, we will take a course of either um, one of these or multiple of these in order to just increase your condition as a whole. So the first one that we'll always start with is self-care. These, um, in general, just improve cardiovascular health as a whole. So these will include quitting smoking, working on losing weight, physical exercise, and taking on a low-fat diet. The next one we'll move to is starting you on some medications. Anticoagulants are important because some of the medications you'll be on to help your cardiovascular health um, actually inhibit clotting, and we don't, or the anticoagulants will inhibit clotting in your vessels, which will help with um, some symptoms that you're having. Beta blockers are important to reduce your heart rate so that there's less stress on your vessels. Antianginals will help with your chest pain, and calcium channel blockers are also used to reduce um, the volume of the blood pressure so that there's less pressure on your vessels. Um, finally, we'll move to, not finally, we'll go to some procedures. The coronary stent is when the tube is placed in the vessels in order to just open them up and allow the blood to flow through them a little bit better. And then a coronary angioplasty is when they'll place a balloon in your vessels and blow that up just to open that up and allow the blood to flow through there as well. And then finally, um, we will present you with the option of surgery, which is a coronary artery bypass surgery. So this is when we're gonna take a healthy one of your veins and actually just bypass the block vein so that the blood has another option to flow through there. So um, when we are working on your diagnosis, these were two things that we looked at. We started with the lipid profile. Um, and so elevated levels of the lipid profile are a big indicator of CAD because that is that what is blocking your arteries, which allows the blood to not flow through there. And then another thing that we wanted to look at was an electrocardiogram. Electrical changes in the activity of the heart 
uh, can actually show us that there's an inadequate blood supply, injury, or necrosis, so tissue actual death in your heart or vessels. We also did take a look at some MRIs and CTs because these can show um, zones of impaired blood supply as well. And then, so your prognosis, 32% of CAD, death from CAD in the US does occur before the age of 65. So it's not something that um, is present only in like older populations or anything like that. It might be more prevalent, but it is something that everyone needs to be at least aware <coughs> of. 20% um, of all deaths in the United States are accounted for from some type of coronary artery disease. And there is a new death from it every 83 seconds. And finally, follow up. So we wanted to leave you with these four things. First of all, something that you need to be aware of is prevention as a whole. So although you may have already been diagnosed, it's important to review lifestyle modifications with your family, your care team, and everybody like that to make sure that they work well for everyone involved. Some medications, it's important that you understand side effects, um, dosage, action, and any side effects of your medications so that you need to know what to look for in case um, things start changing and then you need to notify your care team. Thirdly, post-op, it's important that you understand um, signs of infection and that's what you need to do to make sure your decisions heal well if you've had any surgeries. And finally, um, activity restriction. So you know yourself best, but depending on the type and extent of your condition, understand what restrictions you should be taking on your activity as a whole.